know, there's so many different permutations that you have to go through in your mind to deceive those fish. Because generally speaking, unless you're very, very fortunate and you know the habits of those fish in that river real well, the odds of you coming up with the answer off the get-go are generally not very high. But I know this river fairly good, and I know generally speaking, if I fish small Karanuba nymphs, size 18s and 20s, odds are I should get those fish to eat them. Making upstream presentations here. We don't really want to get upstream with those fish and spook them, so we're going to work up towards them. The essence, really, a lot of midge fishing, end of the story, really is to use long leader systems. Watch again, I'll demonstrate that. I stop my rod short of that, so everything turns over and lands down on the surface of the, of the water. And we've got a decent fish on here, I think, Jim. Less likely to spook the fish too when you get a nice soft land in the, the line. That was kind of a good example of that because the line come down, touched on real, real gently and immediately that fish took the fly. The deal is this, we don't necessarily want an entire leader system made up of fluorocarbon when we're nymph fishing. What we do need to do is extend overall the length of the line where we apply or put the addition of fluorocarbon to eliminate that shadow on the bed of the river. Because I can assure you, when fish see that line track downstream towards them on the bed of that river, it'll spook them or they'll be extremely wary. What we're going to be looking at right here is a more of a deep water scenario. See how high that indicator perks on the surface? You can read it real, real well at extreme range, right there on the edge of that bank. If it slows down or it twitches or whatever else, I'm going to react to it because it could be a fish. It may be the bed of the river. I don't know that. Leader tippet sections, to some extent, that's going to be determined by the nature of the water you're fishing. But to all intents and purposes, what you're going to do, whether you use a manufactured uh, factory tapered leader and or you build your own system, it amounts to this at the end of the day. It has to terminate in such a way as A, that you could get good turnover and that Ultimately, the fly that you're using as the representation for the emerger fishes in exactly the right position. Set up your drift line well before you get to the fish. What we want to avoid is any unnecessary drag or movement on that fly. Some of these trout have seen an awful lot in their time and and are always easily convinced that what you're doing is is natural and and there we go. Perfect, perfect line of drift. Fish came right up, popped just down to the surface, took that and murder as he should. Ain't no monster fish, but that don't matter. You know, those little fish can be as difficult to catch as those big fish, believe me. And in all probability, midge fishing is a little more demanding than most, if not all other aspects of fly fishing for trout. Ultimately, you know, there's a great deal of satisfaction too. You know, I can't, Remember, you know, the numbers of big trout. What I mean by big trout, I mean fish that are 20, 20 inches or more that I've caught on micro small flies and fine tippets. And there's a great deal of satisfaction there because you know to have achieved the end result, to hold that fish in your hand, you've done everything right.